in this list. Haha. <laughs> Forgot that I have a a remote. Never remember to use these, and I'm remembering right now, so this is pretty exciting. Okay. Hello, everyone. Here's what we're here to talk about. I'm not really going to cover. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really great at uh, covering what my talk title is, but that was the talk title I gave when they asked, and here we are. So who am I? My name is Joey Parrott. Uh, I am the Dev Infra lead uh, for Angular, so I am in charge of our infrastructure and operations. Some fun things about me. I love watching movies. I watched 202 movies in 2022. Um, I really like skiing, climbing, being outside in general. Um, I currently live in Boulder, Colorado in the United States. And so, as I mentioned, what do I do? I am the, the technical lead for the Dev Infra team. So that is um, like the infrastructure of how we build Angular um, and like the tooling we use, as well as some of the operations um, around like pull requests and issues and things. Um, I am most often, if you see anybody talking about Dev Infra, it is me, but I am definitely not the only person doing that. It's all of these people. So doesn't make any effective work does all the work, does all the work, leads all of us. That's pretty much the distribution of work. But it's been nice because I've been able to take credit for everything they do. Um, so yeah, Paul, Paul, and, uh, Paul and I are the people who spend by far the most time. Charles is also on the tooling team, um, but graciously helps us as well. Uh, and Christina manages all of us. But I don't know if anybody here knows this, but Angular sees a lot of contribution and activity. Uh, we see approximately 187 pull requests a week, 65 issues, and just the framework was copied into Google 328 times last year. Um, that means that 328 times we had to take the changes we made and make sure they worked in all of Google at the same time. And this is a team of about 20 people. So this is a, this is a, a question I like to ask myself. Why spend one minute doing a mundane task when you can spend an hour failing to automate it? That is pretty much my day, every day. So it really is about using our limited resources that we have on focused areas. Um, as I mentioned, we only have 20 people. We have more than 20 packages we publish. Like, we don't even have a person per package. Most things have more than one person who is in charge of them. We have less than one. So it's very important for us that we find ways to capitalize um, those limited resources. And so I kind of want to talk about what the responsibilities more in depth are of Dev Infra to kind of explain that. So um, at kind of at the high level, there's seven? Seven. Seven things um, that you can kind of talk about us managing. It's operations, infrastructure. We have compliance things we need to do. There's Security and privacy related things. Uh, we also are in charge of all like the accounts that are responsible for that we use in Angular, all the third party services we rely on. And because, like all of you, I imagine you make things, you have to support them. Unfortunately, we also have to support things. We don't get to just throw it over the wall and say, you're developers. I've tried, it doesn't work. <laughs> the two things that I really want to talk about though are security and operationalization. I'd like to pause here though. Show of hands. Who thinks this is a good icon? You were right, Megan. This is not a great icon for operationalization. I asked her when I was making these slides, and she said, I don't really get that. And I said, I like it. <laughs> so security and operationalization, that's what we're talking about. And my ability to pick slides, apparently, or icons. So in security, I think it's important to know uh, the only secure system has no users. Like, full stop, as soon as you introduce anything out of your control, it's no longer secure. All you can do is mitigate potential security vulnerabilities at that point, right? Even with people's best intentions, they can screw up, cause security vulnerabilities. So it's kind of, it's kind of tough living in a world where I don't trust anyone, but I don't trust any of you, so it's okay. The way that we go about trying to mitigate this, and one of the big things we're working on now, is two-party control. Um, so essentially, all we're talking about here is that one person cannot go do things by themselves. So we prevent rogue actors, which led to a really great joke in ng-conf about 
uh, Anna Paquin not being allowed to contribute to Angular because she played Rogue in X-Men. Um, I wasn't allowed, to, I, we asked a lawyer, I was not allowed to put a picture on here because it could be defamation and I could get sued. So she's not up here, but Anna Paquin, let's be real, if Anna Paquin wants to contribute to Angular, like she can, that's fine. I don't know what her life is. She probably doesn't have time. Anyway, uh, so what we're working on right now is two-party control of making sure that we don't allow for one person intentionally or unintentionally to just go do things. So that's uh, as mundane as like deciding if we should release. That should probably take more than one person. But also merging any size PR. Just because a PR is one line and I wrote it and I'm confident that it works, doesn't mean that it hurts for another person to look at it. So we are working on, as much as we can, having two-party control. And so the big way that we're doing this that I can kind of outline, you notice we are not eliminating, we are reducing, uh, root access in production. So what we're trying to do is make it so that no one in Angular has right access to our repository. Um, in an ideal world, all we would have is like the minimal read access and that is it, but GitHub is a little bit coarse with their, with their permission model. Um, so there's a couple, a couple things that I want to note here. Um, one is that what we do only works because Google, or Google, uh, Angular works with a fork and pull model. So I don't know how many of you use GitHub day to day um, for your work, or Git is in general, but no one actively develops in the Angular, Angular repository. We all develop in our own forks, we create pull requests, and we try to take the code from our forks into the main repository. So because we do that, no one actually needs to be in the Angular, Angular repository. So instead, what we've set up is we now have a service that I created that allows us to request a access token to temporarily be able to write something to Angular. And it requests it, we verify you are who you are, great, it establishes a WebSocket and then requests an app installation token. So via that WebSocket, which is only opened for this, we get the token and hand it back through a SSL secured uh, socket. Then the action occurs while the socket is still open, which is great, we get the token back, we invoke merge access, we confirm that it's complete, and then we close the WebSocket. As soon as the WebSocket is closed, we revoke that token, which also means that if somebody were to like accidentally close this WebSocket, you lose internet connection or whatever, that token is immediately revoked as well. And this is what we get at with life of, an life of an action authentication. So we are trying to only have the door open to make a change in Angular the absolute minimum amount of time. What it looks like right now is that, you know, this took me an hour to make because I'm not good at these, but this represents like four seconds in time. So there is only four seconds where you could theoretically even get a token to do something to the Angular repo. And then after four seconds, it doesn't have access anymore anyway, so congrats on your string that means nothing. So this, this reduction in root access is kind of what we're getting at when we talk about trying to be more secure in how we do our operations. Um, one of the things that I really like to talk about um, and kind of really shows both how we feel about our security as well as Google as a whole about us is uh, last fall, uh, Google announced the, I really think this through, Google Open Source Software Vulnerability Rewards Program. OSS VRP, <laughs> way easier. So we, uh, similar to Google's regular VRP, uh, if you find a security vulnerability in one of our open, some of our open source projects or one of Google's actual products, you can report them and get money, which is super cool. It's been really fun to hand out money. Um, so we are rewarding discoveries of you know, supply chain compromise, vulnerabilities by design, leaks credentials, and that kind of thing. And Angular is actually one of the original five flagship projects that Google kind of stamped and said, we are going to reward for everything on this. We consider it important and uh, well-maintained enough that we are willing to back that. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> super fun. Yeah, it's, the, it's the nicest thing any management chain has ever said about me. Um, <laughs> but uh, I actually sit on this uh, panel that um, I don't decide if it's a vulnerability or not. That's for smarter people, but I do get to decide if we want to reward uh, money for it. And it has been really fun to see the creative ways people think about attacking or in sometimes, in some cases, stumbling into a vulnerability. 
Um, but it's, it's definitely, um, it's a really nice feather in our cap that Google is willing to stand behind us like this. And it's really nice for all of you because if you can figure out what I've done wrong, I will pay you. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about operationalization a little bit. Um, I view the goal of DevInfra as, in a lot of ways, eliminating tedious work. Go of hands. I know, I, I've heard all about the, uh, you know, the things people say about Swiss people. Who here loves tedious work? None of you? That guy raised his hand. <laughs> oh, I'm, in, I'm into that, that's awesome. That is awesome, yes. So, I'm trying to eliminate, oh, I'm so sorry, microphone. I am trying to eliminate tedious work. So this is some, some of these things are pretty straightforward. Like we now release our documentation site automatically. Uh, it used to be that you did a release and then you ran a script that released the, the documentation site and we said, why don't they just do it automatically? And as I talked about earlier with <laughs> the fact that this person does all the work, Paul made it happen. <laughs> So we eliminate tedious work. We're trying to make developers' lives easier, right? Like all of these things that we talk about with infrastructure and operations, like they're relatively speaking straightforward. I like to talk about how the, tech, the technical complications of what I do is in breadth, not in depth, right? Like it's just a lot of things, but none of them are like super deep. So we're just trying to make people's lives easier, even helping them do those mundane tasks that they already have to do. So. For instance, we have an ng-dev tool set that we, that we use that's a bunch of utilities and for formatting. Fun fact, uh, prior to 2018-ish, um, the three primary Angular repositories had nine different formatters that ran. Cool, we don't even have nine languages. <laughs> so, now we are down to seven. <laughs> but importantly, it's all just one command now. You just run a format and you don't have to worry about it because there are reasons to have different formats and stuff, but it shouldn't, if we're talking about making your life easier as a developer, it shouldn't matter to you. Like you don't care what format it is, you just want, you just want CI to pass. All you care about is getting that check, right? So running format just does the correct thing for you. And that is an example of us trying to shield developers from complexity. There is a lot of things you don't want to think about as a developer but have to be considered and we try to shield people from that. So an example is uh, our release process. A couple years ago, we had a really nice doc. Like 60-ish steps, it was beautiful. <laughs> you copy and paste it and hopefully you were running batch because if you were running ZSH, it did not work. Nobody knows how ZSH works, that's just how it is. Instead, our release is now a script that you say, release, publish, and it's like, oh, I know what you wanna do. What do you wanna publish? You wanna publish the next release? You wanna publish a patch? And you pick, and it's like, great! This is what the release notes are gonna look like. How do you feel about that? And you're like, oh, those are awesome. It's like, great, go get somebody to review it, because as we discussed, <laughs> two-party control. You can't release your own thing, you need somebody to help you. So. You, you get somebody to help you, they approve it, and then the tool's like, cool, I got you. Let's merge, merge, let's release, go to NPM. Let's push out a new doc site because <laughs> we're, making we're eliminating tedious work by doing so. So we took what used to be a 60 step process, a lot of copying, pasting, and also nobody really knew how it worked, so if it failed along the way, you didn't know what to do. And we just made it a script that just does it for you and tells you what's going on along the way. And then we do two releases a week, technically, so you do it twice. I have plans to make it so you do it once and it does them both, but <laughs> that would be bragging. Another example is merging. Uh, fun fact, um, part of what is super complicated about the Angular repositories is we actually maintain multiple active releases, bran releasable branches at a time, uh, between two and four. So when you actually create a PR in Angular, you are targeting multiple branches, which is on its face dumb. <laughs> in practice, also dumb. But there's a, there's a thing within Google where it's like, we make 
the impossible possible, and we make the reasonable just below impossible. And for that reason, we continue to do this. But so merging used to be the same thing. You used to merge, and then after you merged, you cherry picked, and then if the cherry pick works correctly, you push that up. Cool, what if it doesn't work? Oh, well now you have to go fix it because you already merged something and now you're in this like mismatched state but you also want to go home because it's dinner time and you're hungry <laughs> and like you have to decide like is it more important that like my job likes me or that I eat this hamburger? And I kept choosing hamburger <laughs> and that was a problem. So we created the PR merge. So now this automatically happens. It checks ahead of time like, hey, I'm gonna merge all of these things. Does it land cleanly? If it doesn't land cleanly, it doesn't get you into a broken state. It just tells you it won't work and then tells you to fix it first. And so it's things like this that are, that are us shielding from complexity, right? These are tedious, complex in the fact that there's a lot to do but not really t hard things to do the whole time that we are able to shield developers from. And it's, these, it's coordination of these multiple things that really gets our value, right? Each of those, like us, us making merging a little bit easier, what do we save? Five minutes? Who cares? But as we talked about, I'm not gonna scroll all the way back because it's like the <laughs> second slide. We have 75, 129 PRs a week. Five, five minutes, 129 times, who's good at math? A lot of time. <laughs> so us merging that way is, is a much more effective and it's, those, it's the things working together and multiplying over and over that actually brings the value. We're saving seconds at a time, lots of times, rather than saving a lot of time once. So why does this coordination matter for Angular? Well, don't worry, this is my second to last slide. I see you all nodding off, I appreciate it. I was the same way. Uh, we are trying to deduplicate things, right? We don't want us to be doing the same efforts over and over. And that deduplication allows us to scale our process and infrastructure uh, more effectively. It allows us to create a more consistent experience for both us as the Angular team developing, as well as what people expect from us. Um, we reduce the cost of a context switch, right? We can't stop context switching from happening, but we can make it so that it's a less costly endeavor to do so. Us, us having all of this coordination allows us to look at the picture as a whole. Instead of solving one problem and just solving what's right in front of us, we can step back and say, okay, well, what are we trying to solve overall and how does this one problem contribute to the overall set of problems? And it allows us to have a more cohesive effort, right? We reduce the misalignment of our efforts where one team thinks they're doing one thing and one team thinks they're doing another. If we're all on the same page, it's quicker to turn that page. Is that a metaphor thing? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will be taking no questions. That's a, that's a lie. I'm, I'm here for the questions. I don't know if you guys can tell.